Jazzcast Pros. What does burnout look like? What does burnout truly feel like? How do we come back from burnout? There's a lot of tips and tricks out there around like quote unquote self-care and like they can be things like taking more bubble baths and face masks and getting massages. And like, while I think those things are important, when you truly hit a deep level of burnout, it is so much more than that. And in my conversation with Shantae today, we get into when she had seven locations physical locations and got to the point where she didn't even care. And I think that's a level of burnout that some of us can relate to when like getting to the point where nothing matters, which is really scary. And Shantae has a beautiful story to go from where she was of having these physical locations, shutting them all down, creating a telemedicine business and her beautiful story where she is today helping other women through stages of burnout. It is an incredible conversation, one that I think is really needed, and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the current or aspiring solopreneur, navigate the messy middle so you can make both an income and an impact. Hi, I'm Rashawn, and I love creating safe spaces for women to be courageous in their dreams. After spending a decade working in sales for a startup and talking with hundreds of other women entrepreneurs, I know it can be lonely, but you can do this. We are having impactful conversations with people walking similar paths to you. So pull up a seat. This is High Vibe Table Talks. I am very excited to have our conversation here with Shantae. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here to spread the news. Yeah. So can you tell a little bit about who you are, where you are located geographically, and who do you serve? Sure. Sure. So I'm Shantae Golson, LPC. I'm a medical provider in in private practice, uh, scale my business up to five locations, and you're going to hear a little bit more about that. Still medical provider to maintain licensure and et cetera. But now in the state of Georgia, I am turning global. And what that simply means is I am an EQ leadership coach for professional women, teaching them how to prioritize self-care in order to be happy, fulfilled, and balanced. That's awesome. A lot of women entrepreneurs that I work with Their current clients are a lot of times previous versions of themselves. And I know that like your story when we first talked was just really powerful and difficult and had some lows in it. So can you share with us kind of how you got where you are today? Sure. So as I may mention, as a medical provider and an entrepreneur with five clinics in the state of Georgia, of course, that in itself, when you hear that, that's amazing. But behind the scenes, it became exhausting. Starting off a very gun ho been in practice for close to 16 years. And Doing my day-to-day, working 70 hours, 65 hours in traffic for 10 hours a week, uh, suddenly came to a halt. So all of this energy, all of this go-get that I had for all of those years, suddenly it was like a bomb dropped on me. Not only did the 1,000-pound bomb drop on me, but it also exploded. And so as a result of the explosion, it just became too much. And I had to face two corners of my life. And the right hand side was, do I continue on serving people on empty or do I choose myself? And so I decided to choose myself. And as a result, I scaled down, laid off my staff, closed all my doors and began to do telemedicine two days a week. And that was very taxing. And that was all I could do because I was so mentally exhausted. And so as a result of being mentally exhausted, I had to put some uh, things in place to help me to manage day to day. I'm not talking about manage my work. And I'm not also talking about managing myself, but how do I manage my energy level? How do I manage my mindset? 
How do I manage the ability to make it all work and make sense for me in this mental exhausted place? So mental exhaustion, if you will, is just a terminology that identifies that your mind is tired. Now, it's different from taking a vacation, coming back, and then you're you're well rounded again. It is more so that you cannot get to your premium self anymore. There's something broke. There's something lacking. Your soul is yearning for something that's not there. And so when you deal with prolonged stress, meaning long periods of stress without addressing that, then you can ultimately begin to face burnout. Yeah. It's interesting how you started the conversation because you were like, I had these five practices and from the outside, I looked so successful Mm -hmm. and I had the staff and I was making such a difference. And I think one of the most powerful things that entrepreneurs can do is really hone in on listening to self, you know, and what does my body need? You talk about the yearning and what am I yearning? I recently talked about with someone, there's this book called How to Break Up with Your Phone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And a lot of times it's when you go to pick up your phone, what are you craving in that moment? Are you craving connection? Are you craving education? Like what is it that you're craving and can you find that somewhere else or at least identifying it so that you don't get stuck into the scroll hole that is social media? And so from your experience, what are some things that entrepreneurs can start to identify to say, oh, this is a red flag that like, I shouldn't be pushing through. I need to focus on self. That's the reason why I incorporate emotional intelligence in my burnout recovery phase, because emotional intelligence is the key eye to helping you to be aware of what you need so that you can tap into your subconscious, you can tap into your soul so that you can get responses from yourself. And a lot of people think that may sound different, but as a medical provider, what I do is I incorporate the skills to teach people how to recognize and to see themselves. And when you see yourself and when you recognize what's happening, that's when you can have consciousness to put activities in place, which are self-care, so that you can have self-love. And so uh, emotional intelligence is the big key. Now, when it comes to the ability for people to understand themselves, they must realize their stress points. They must realize their triggers. So in order to understand your stress points, you have to understand what your triggers are. Now, triggers are defined by those things that occur externally, however, also internally. Your thoughts, your your negative chatter in the back of your mind, your pain levels, and et cetera. And the external is what people say, what people do, what they don't do that you think they do, and all the expectations that we have for others that are silent. They don't know that they are on a merry-go-round with us because we don't address that or comment. And so when you understand your triggers, those things that hit your hot button, and we're not just talking about the components of the hot button that then causes an anger response. We're talking about all responses. That's why you must be certain of what all feelings are. And I work with a lot of adults in teaching them what feelings are and what feelings are out there because we can program ourselves even from a child. We can program ourselves to only focus on a certain amount of feelings. That's why our responses are almost the same to everything, but they are not the correct response. Let me put it this way. There's always a feeling behind the feeling. And when we can get to the direct feeling, that's when we can begin to recover in that moment and self-regulate ourselves in order to respond appropriately to whatever we need to respond to. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing a podcast with Brene Brown and she was talking about like 75% of the adult population could only identify like three emotions. And it was like anger, sadness, and happiness. What do you find are the most common emotions behind those emotions? Uh, The most common is anxiety or worry, disappointment, and frustration. 
And what mm-hmm. normally carries, it carries itself in a nutshell. Let's think about a walnut. And if anybody is experienced with sitting with their family as a child around Christmas time, and we would have a bowl of walnuts, you know, now you can get them, you know, prepackaged and et cetera. But the, be- yeah. the ability to crack these, to get to the walnut in which we enjoy, there was a shell. And Mm -hmm. so oftentimes we wear the shell of anger, sadness, and et cetera. But when we crack that, we really are finding ourselves maybe disappointed or maybe frustrated. So Mm -hmm. I always tell different analogies of stories to help people to understand. Say, for instance, there was a, a professional woman. She is getting ready to leave the house. Her daughter, which is a preteen, a tween, began to express herself a little bit different this that particular morning. And so her tween began to say words and expressions and behaviors that she had never before. So she picked this up from somewhere, but we're not going to go there, with, you know. But, <laughs> but her mother just became so angry because the tween began to present herself in such a different way that the mother has, had not learned to adjust to. And so what happened is the mother came to work. She was in leadership position because I do service C-suite and entrepreneurs. And Mm -hmm. so she began to work with her staff and she was so snappy. She was so snappy and so angry. And sometimes these things are not recognized. People say, well, how can you not recognize when you are angry or upset? That's because people attempt to hide it. And I have, I always teach people those strong emotions you can't hide. It's going to pop yeah. out of your face. It's going to pop on your eyebrows. <laughs> it's going to pop in your tone, even your disposition of how you walk away. It is going to show itself. And that's what we call manifest. So, mm-hmm. so the symptoms of her triggers, because she didn't deal with her triggers. All right. Uh, the symptom is displacement, giving other people, what she would have given to her daughter, Mm. right? Given to other people. And so with that being stated, this displacement started a domino effect, which caused the, the department to stay away from her, to start gossiping about her. And you know that that can lead to a whole nother issue, but we're going to come back and we're going to deal with the simplicity of this. So I helped her for an example. I helped her understand that she did not deal with what was really going on. So this is where EQ comes in. How can you gain awareness of how you truly felt? And so as we begin to explore this, she understood that she felt disappointed, Mm -hmm. not angry, disappointed because her child had never revealed this type of behavior before. Now, ironically, I want to share some information with you to kind of bring more substance to this. Were you aware that there is a rise in searches for managing overwhelm and emotional regularity techniques? There's mm-hmm. a rise in Google. I'm not shocked. Right. But yeah. It's And so in the last 30 days, professional women has tirelessly been looking for a better way. The incidents, the national, what's going on on TV uh, and everything else, right? They desire Mm -hmm. to break free from the negative emotions that hold them back. Mm -hmm. So with this being stated, there is a sense of emergency and that's where I come in. There is a sense of emergency of not understanding how to take care of ourselves because if I would have taken care of myself better, then I would not have burnt out to the severity that I did. Again, Mm -hmm. I use the the term a bomb, a thousand pound bomb, and then it exploded. Well, let me share with you what it exploded and how that manifested. The explosion was a breakup in which I didn't see coming around the corner that I thought I was going to get married. So now I'm burnt out. I have no energy to give to anybody and I'm running on fumes. I'm still showing up professionally. I'm still showing up this. However, don't want to show up. However, Mm -hmm. have to coach myself before I see someone trying to cancel appointments, calling my secretary, who next? Can we cancel that? Can we rearrange that? 
So a lot of things happen. You become cynical, you become exhausted, you become irresponsible, you become procrastinative, and you try to cope unhealthy. So I found myself rather eating salads. I found myself making lists for my secretary that was pizza and chips and hamburgers and french fries and, you know, and candy. There's this one incident that I try never to remember, to excuse me, never to forget, because this is the source of helping me to relate to the women. It was lunchtime, and I found myself cutting off my big light, and I just turned on a small lamp, and I turned my computer on to Netflix. And this was at a point that I I was in the office. It was during the middle of the day. I did not want to be bothered. When I tell you I didn't want to be bothered, I didn't want to be bothered. And people are coming in to me to self-regulate, to deal with their depression, their anxiety, their grief, and the list goes on and on. And I did not want to be bothered. I turned on that Netflix. I told them not to bother me at all. If it's a fire, deal with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I found myself just engulfed in, in the movie, trying to mentally step away from the building. Right. I just remember that moment. And I remember thinking, I just want to leave. I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. My own thing that I built with blood, sweat, tears, I started slowly. Stop. I stopped loving it. And then mm-hmm. as a result of me stop loving it, it stopped taking care of me. So when you don't take care of your business, it won't take care of you. I started losing tens of thousands of dollars weekly. I started losing this huge amount every three months, six months, and the list goes on and on, quarter of a million. And and so it was at a point that I had to go and face those two roads, those two lanes. Mm-hmm. The ironic part is somebody will say, well, didn't you notice it? Didn't you know this was happening? Logically, yes. But being emotionally exhausted, you don't care. You mm-hmm. you get to a real place of, I just can't deal with it. I just don't want to deal with it. I just don't care. So this is a larger portion, uh, excuse me, the, a, a longer extent of mental exhaustion and burnt out because there are about seven phases. And when really? you, yeah. And when you get to this particular phase that I'm talking about, you purity don't care and you are at the point of sabotaging your own personal life, not paying mm-hmm. your bills, right? Who cares? Getting foreclosure notices. You know, you're isolating. You don't want to be around anybody. And the list goes on and on. So this is why it is my mission to help women to prioritize self-care because they don't realize that self-care is an activity that helps cultivate self-love in order to have clarity of mind. Self-care is not just these things go to the spa, go to the movies, do this. It's not just that. That's just the activity. Yeah. That's just mm-hmm. the, set, the activity. You understand? Mm-hmm. So we've got to understand working with someone that has been there and done that and that can help you avoid. Mm-hmm. That's the key here. I wish I would have had a community to talk mm-hmm. to. I wish I would have had somebody to go to. Well, somebody may say, well, why you didn't go to a therapist? Let me tell you why. It's not that I'm ashamed to go to a therapy because I provide therapy. It's that I was at the top of my game. Everybody knew me. You say, well, I think that's a little bit arrogant. The whole state knew you. Yes. Hospitals, doctors, lawyers, businesses, everybody sending me patients because I was good at what I did. Mm -hmm. The legal system. I worked with everybody. And so my particular point is I did not want that portion of my life on display at all. Hmm. So what I've learned is there are four corners of our lives that we really, we really need to foster and create a culture of self-care. We need a community. We need a healthy routine. Okay. We need, uh, in the community, someone that you can really talk to or a group of 
like-minded people, not just anybody. And let me tell you, mm-hmm. I could not, yes, I have uh, best friends or close friends back home, but I could not talk to them about this. Why? Mm-mm. They're not business people. One of them said one day when we were in conversation, why do you always talk about business? Because you know me as the child, the teenager, the young adult mm-hmm. that was moving towards these things. But now you don't understand the business woman in me because they are not. Mm-hmm. I mean, and respectfully not trying to make it a derogatory thing, but they aren't entrepreneurs. They aren't yeah. leaders. Mm-hmm. There's a different conversation you have when you talk with someone who's walking a similar path as you Mm -hmm. to to have someone who's like, I have felt that emotion so deeply. I I can feel it in my body again at this moment, just having you talk about your experience Mm -hmm. with it. That's a different, different level of conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And so teaching for 25 years now in the private sector but I've also been in leadership with the state and federal nonprofits and et cetera. So I have a well-rounded understanding of leadership and keep in mind that leadership is just not limited to work. Leadership is relevant to your, your personal life. Mm-hmm. And when we are not leaders in our home, we certainly are not leaders in our departments or our business. You can have a leadership position and know nothing about the operation of leadership have come across that quite a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. So I teach people how I I equip them to identify and manage their emotions effectively so they can foster choice. Oh, choice. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. Choice Mm -hmm. rather than being ruled by impulsivity. Mm -hmm. And that's usually what happens when you have no awareness EQ of your feelings, your emotions, nor the, can you read the room? I put it in uh, simple terms. Can you read the room of other people to gain awareness about what's happening there? Mm -hmm. Now, studies show that low EQ, emotional intelligence, lead to increased conflict, poor communication, and lower productivity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so what are the benefits of EQ? The benefits is self-management and awareness. And then according to Psychology Today study, 90% of top performers have high self-awareness. 90%, right, of top performers have self-awareness. But there's a difference between being aware of emotions and the awareness of discomfort. So oftentimes leaders try not to cause conflict to occur out loud. (laughs) Out loud. But what about the conflict in the email? What about the conflict in the personal conversations behind closed door? What about the conflict between the two and HR? So conflict is not necessarily just the aggressiveness of a tone or communication. It goes well beyond that because when you're not on the same page and when you're not understood, there's going to be a lot of differences. And so being a leader consists of being able to influence and to encourage a different outcome, helping people to see things different is a component of what leadership is. And so when we talk about the differences, now, Psychology Today says that 90% of top performers have high self-awareness. I disagree, however, okay? If they've done the study, then we'll just go with that. But there's a big difference between, again, awareness of your emotions and the awareness of discomfort. And the key is to be aware of the trigger events. That's that trigger again. Why? Because the trigger is the starting point of everything. Let me tell you my three-tier formula. A trigger occurs. Your brain recognizes the discomfort. It then computes the situation to find a feeling that's relevant. And if there is a similarity of the situation, it goes back into the file cabinet because it has no sense of time. There's two components, the limbic system and the cerebral cortex that identifies what's going to be recognized. 
So we call in the little brother or the big brother. I do rather. I call the little brother or the big brother to give people a better understanding. So the big brother is the analytical one. The little brother is the child, the brat, the, the quick impulsive one. And so the little brother said, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is what happened when we were 17 and that lady said this. Oh, and so it goes into the file cabinet in relatability, the same situation, although it's a different decade, the person is different, but the similarities of the trigger. And so then it began to lead you to respond. It gives you an output of that same feeling that ties to that similar trigger. So we are not born with triggers. Triggers are made. And I don't want to get too much on that particular lesson, but to help you to understand then that feeling is, uh, becomes an output. And when we still don't understand what's happening with us per the awareness, the emotional intelligence, then that feeling then goes into a response or behavior. So the culprit of all of this process the thoughts, the feelings, as well as the uh, responses, the culprit is impulsivity. When we don't catch or understand what's happening from each stage, it's a just like a split of a second, shoom, and the impulsivity makes us respond inappropriately. So this is why emotional intelligence is beyond important to help us to respond in a less consequential way. Now, self-care allows us to recognize our triggers and emotional patterns, and it leads us to a better decision-making and stress management. Yeah. And I mean, so much of what I talk about on this podcast and you just brought so much depth to the conversation is bringing attention and then intention, bring attention to your triggers, your emotions, what's happening, and now bring intention to them. How can you intentionally react based on knowing what your trigger is, what your actual emotion is, how you want the output to actually be? Yeah, there is so much there and I could talk to you forever. We are coming up on our time, which is so crazy. It's always like, where did that 30 minutes just go? It's Mm -hmm. wild. So are you ready for the lightning round questions? And go. (laughs) What is a must-read book? The Bible. What does creativity mean to you? The artistic response of what your soul is depicting. Ooh, I like that one. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? I've already done it, so you do what I'm advising you to do to get the same outcome. College Mm -hmm. professor said that because I disagreed with some things. And that never left me. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. What is something that's on your bucket list? To live in France. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are you more of like a Parisian idea, like in the city or more of like the countryside? No, absolutely. The city. I can tell you Nice, France is the specific. I want to live in the city center. I want to be a pebble throw from the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. Hmm. We are manifesting that for you. I love it. And what is the coolest thing you've done in the last year or are currently working on? I've done a lot of cool things, but I'm working on accepting that a new beginning is okay. And in that new beginning, I'm wanting to do travel vlogging. Ooh, Cool. Yeah. I love that. And I love that like you took it to like this whole new frontier that you're working on. And as you were describing your burnt out self, you know, I was kind of reflecting back on like previous versions of myself where I was like, oh, that that person was so unhealthy, like Mm -hmm. and just and I just want to give them a hug. And I'm so proud of like the work that I've done to get to where I am today. And and I heard that in your story of like being down in that deeper part of burnout. And it is a huge applause to you to like recognize that and pivot. And, and I just, I can't imagine how difficult some of those conversations were to like let go of staff and locations and clients. And, um, but you had to kind of burn it all down to have kind of that like, new phoenix rising 
uh, for yourself. So yeah, I had to I, choose me. I had to choose yeah. me because customer service has always been a prominent key point for me personally and professional. And when I found myself not having the best customer service and one of the parents of the patients that I was working with saying, you're acting so stoic. Well, she didn't realize what I was going through. I was holding myself up plus this bomb just enough to speak with her about a big issue. And that's all I could do. That is all I can do. And that was a wake up call for me. Okay, now you didn't create a whole nother candle and have blown it on both sides. Not the original, but a whole nother. And so it's time to do something. And that's why I'm launching a membership, a, a self-care village membership to help mm-hmm. the, the leaders, the professional women in leadership uh, or in business to help them to understand the components of different aspects of personal development so they can become their optimal self, live the best life and be happy. We take that for granted. We we just think the word happiness is just a peanut. Mm-mm. No, it's a real thing and we can have it. We just have not had it. Right. So being fulfilled and being balanced. And this is what the membership is all about. So they can go to the leveling place dot com mm-hmm. for slit slash uh, the waiting list so they can be the first ones to know when everything launches. Awesome. I will make sure to put all that in the show notes. I myself am a huge proponent of finding community, um, especially in this journey. So I will make sure I'll put all that in the show notes so people can sign up. Shantae, this was such a wonderful yeah. conversation. I really appreciate you joining High Vibe Table Talks today. I appreciate the invitation and I hope to uh, work with you in the future. If you like that episode, please leave a review. Those are always so helpful on whatever platform you listen to this. I hope that you took something away from this. You understand that not only is this really important, even if there's no urgency to it at the moment, it's something you can do. And taking one step towards that today for your business's freedom and reducing burnout. So until next time, remember that big dreams and small steps will transform your life.